So welcome to our webinar. Today we are focusing on Location Europe platform. My name is Annina Lundvall and I come from Location Innovation Hub, working there as a communication manager. And uh, the agenda for today, the webinar program looks like this. Uh, we are going to talk first with Antti Jakobson, who is uh, the project manager of Location Innovation Hub and also has been the project manager for GeoE3, uh, from which this platform was originally kind of produced under. So we are going to talk about the platform and the benefits for users and Antti will also show some videos about the, the content. And then uh, Lassi Lehto from FGI Research Manager is going to show kind of a demo uh, about searching the solar energy potential by using the platform. And uh, then we are going to talk a bit about the future, what are the plans with the platform, talking with Antti, and then we have time for some questions. Um, and as you can see, the, the webinar will be recorded and we will send you the link after this event. And uh, keep your cameras and microphones off during these presentations. And then when, you, when it's time for questions, of course, open the mic and open your camera if you, if you want. Microphone is, you need to open it, but cameras you can leave out if, if you want. And if you have any questions, the chat is open, so you can write the write the uh, questions or comments in the chat. Or then, when we have the time for questions, uh, you can you can ask. And also, uh, we appreciate any feedback after this event. So when you get email from us, please give us feedback. And of course, uh, you can write it. Uh, in the chat as well. And Maria will be there uh, hosting you there if there's something uh, wrong with the teams or or you need assistance, please ask Maria uh, by using the chat. So she will be your help. Uh, there was uh, more than 40 uh, registered participants. I can't see now the amount of, 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 of the participants, but I hope you are on board and hope you are ready. So we can start with Antti. I will put my screen share away. There you are. And uh, Antti, just briefly introduce the Location uh, Europe platform, what it is. Explain. So basically, the the platform is the outcome from the GOE3 project that we were running three years and five months. So it ended in the end of February now, and it's part of the Connecting Europe Facility uh, program. And the idea there was to, to show that how we can connect the national data, data sources or especially national services uh, related to three different use cases that we, we were focusing and one of them was the solar energy potential, but there was also this building energy efficiency use case part of that. Uh, they also the uh, smart cities, and then the uh, the third one was the um, uh, let's say logistics type of use case. So that was the the basis of of why we created this location Europe platform. Um, the uh, from the location innovation hub point of view. This is part of our test before invest to type of service. So basically it's targeted to, to businesses, but also public sector to test if they want to create something related to those national uh, services. And here we, I would say that we are focusing on this high value data set. So it's not only this kind of traditional mapping agency or cadastral agency data, but there's also meteorological climate related data, statistical data, that kind of things that we want to kind of show 
and demonstrate and create business business opportunities for for uh, different SMEs, startups, mm-hmm. but also public sector. So that's the basic idea. We have millions and billions of different data portals and, you know, these kind of platforms of geospatial data. How is this different? What's new? So basically this is, uh, well, obviously this is a platform that you can view the data. But the main main idea is that we we also do a certain interoperability here. So it's not only connecting the existing national data, we also change it so that the national data is uh, at certain level interoperable. And then we, we publish one API that is helping you to actually connect different countries, but you don't have to search what are the services and, and it's only one API. So it should be easy to connect, easy to utilize. And, and basically that's our offering for the API based business that, uh, be, that we want to kind of um, promote. Okay, fair enough. You have the video material. Do you want to show it now and explain a bit further? Yeah, we have created this kind of overview video, but I can I can show it. So basically, it it shows uh, the current uh, current offering that we we are. So we start from Spain, and here we go to Barcelona, and and basically we can see that you can uh, use the platform to to have this level of de- detail well it says level of detail two but it's actually level of detail one one in barcelona so here, here we can see that uh we what uh what you can do with that and and you can you can view uh, barcelona then we go to netherlands and here actually we also um we actually also have used the ortho photos but also there's a level of the actually here we can have the level of detail two buildings and 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 basically you can you can see that what is available uh, from 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 there from Netherlands and then we uh, finally uh, uh, well we can go to Amsterdam now and see that what what the Amsterdam looks like from from our d- data then we we are going to Norway. Actually, this is a draft video, so actually you cannot see any any our buildings there. But but we have uh, certain data from Norway as well. Uh, we will be changing that to final final version of the video. Uh, this is I think it's Hernefoss probably. I'm not certain of that, but I, I would check that. And then we go to Estonia, uh, where we also have a level of, and, and Tallinn, where we have level of detail, two buildings. But here we, has, oh, we have also integrated certain other data sets, like orthophotos, laser scan data, and also uh, this kind of BIM model to show that what kind of thing you can, you can explore and what kind of use cases you can start. Uh, doing with this kind of data that uh, that we have uh, uh, from the from the platform, it uh, probably will go soon to this yeah this um, this uh, uh, BIM model that we we have there. Uh, so that's one of the BIM models that we have uh, uh, get uh, got from the from Estonia, and then we finally go to Finland, but that also. Um, and then we then we see Helsinki, but actually this is this is not the data that we got got from the platform, but this is Helsinki city data. But that will be changed also to the final version of the of the video. So that's the basic idea. That okay, we have certain access point today, and you can get access to to um, buildings, roads, uh, climate data, and Lasse will be talking uh, later later more on that. Yes. Okay. Um, well, basically, uh, let's uh, let's uh, get, get to Lassi's presentation soon. But uh, about the benefits, uh, you will have now, or we have uh, in the platform, we have uh, the material from what five different countries, right? We have more than five countries. It's it's five partners, but we five have also partners, some data but, from France yeah. and Germany. Yeah, uh, and and you have some uh, some data, uh, kind of the data 
is is not the same from every country, right? Uh, you know, yes, it varies a bit. The, from, yeah, from the, let's say, from the 3D data. And, and basically, it's always, it will be always the case with, with, with mm. those countries that the countries uh, at certain country provide certain things. But what we want to do here is that we saw that we can do interoperability and in in case of 3d data we we actually uh, uh, process uh, with certain countries this data on the fly and change it to at least level of detail one uh, based mm. on on the on the 2d buildings for example but lastly we'll come back to this yeah later on. yeah well explain me the benefits briefly if you are using the platform, what are the key benefits that you will gain from the business benefit, perspective? Uh, well, business the key perspective is mm. that you get the most up-to-date data from each of the countries. So basically, you don't have to search uh, what is the what is the data that you would like to have those from those countries. We already have done that. And basically, because it's it's connected uh, to the national services, so when it is updated, it is automatically updated. Uh, so that's the key benefit from from uh, from the user point of view is that mm. that you actually get access to those data sets. Okay, access to the data sets now, Lassi, if you are ready, we can we can go there. Thank you for uh, Auntie for. At, at at this point and let's go back to the future future of uh, of this platform later but let's let's take a look at Lassi's uh, use case or demo what what he's up to thank you Antti. so i'm Lassi Lehto from FGI uh, Finnish uh, Geospatial Research Institute and um, my idea here is to talk about the Location Europe platform that was already briefly introduced by Antti and, and Annina. And uh, I will go through a couple of slides quite quickly and then, then I will demonstrate the <coughs> lead um, instance of the, of the platform shortly. So a couple of things uh, as Antti already uh, mentioned, we have been focusing on certain um, specific data sets that are, are related to uh, use cases, like here, for example, energy. And based on that uh, selection, we, we have been including uh, themes like buildings, roads, digital terrain model, digital surface model, and different climate, climate attributes also. From, from all the participating countries. All datasets uh, and, and content is available on this platform via the modern OGC API family of, of uh, interface standards like OGC API features, coverages, also some use of records and processes. And we run this, uh, uh, this service on a cloud service platform in, in Finland. And just to, uh, to give you a basic idea how it works, we have the cloud service platform on top and uh, at the bottom we have the national uh, access points, national services that are mostly um, the legacy OGC uh, service interfaces like web feature services and web coverage services. Also some uh, OGC API implementations are already available and on the platform we then um, do some <clears throat> harmonization for the content uh, and then provide the the resulting data sets uh, as Antti said through a single access point to the client side so this is the basic basic idea and one important consideration here is uh, when we are using the OGC API uh, service interfaces there's a concept of data collections and inside each uh, API we basically have the participating countries, the countries that provide content for the platform as data collections inside the API. So for example in the case of buildings, 2D, 2D buildings here, here we have a list of 
countries. So th those countries data sets are as data collections inside this API. Um, as we as you saw in the in the video that Antti displayed, um, the three D buildings have been an essential important uh, data set that we have been working with in the in the platform, and we are able now to provide three uh, D buildings from all all the participating five countries, um, uh, some of them in lot two and some of them in a lot one level of detail. Um, just examples on visualized from different countries um, uh, in Finland, Netherlands and Estonia, we get lot two level buildings, as you see, and Norway and Spain are dynamically generated lot uh, one level models. So cross border is an important uh, aim here, as you see here, for example, 2D buildings from Finland and Norway across the border river in the north, so we are able to uh, seamlessly access content from from different countries across national borders. In a similar way, uh, this is DTM content uh, from Norway and Finland seamlessly uh, integrated by the platform. Also, 3D buildings can be accessed uh, in cross-border manner. This example is from the border between Netherlands and Germany. And finally, climate data. That's an important uh, sub-topic that we have been working with. So we get um, uh, climate data, meaning long uh, period average values from the meteorological agencies portals from from the parties uh, participating countries agencies and then we uh, from the point observations we create interpolated grid and provide that through uh, coverages service interface and we also integrate these values to individual buildings which is um, an interesting topic also uh, if we present the climate um, uh, properties in, in visual form, this is the coverage kind of uh, visualization of uh, temperature from Spain, for example, or integrated view again, Norway and Finland temperature uh, coverage. Then we have been working recently with uh, uh, improved uh, new user interface where we have um, added some new functionalities specifically to help the, um, let's say, um, uh, novice user that it's not too much familiar with uh, geospatial data applications to uh, as easily as possible to, to, to browse the content available. So I will show you in a minute the actual user interface. Um, this is just an illustration of uh, about um, a new layer of, of integration that we apply in this uh, latest release of the of the platform to integrate content already uh, across across different countries uh, in the in the service uh, platform itself uh, shown here. So the platform is available from URL location Europe. And you can provide your feedback, for example, to, to me. So this much about the slideshow and then we, I will go to the, my browser to show you some uh, uh, leave demonstration of the platform. So this is the landing page of the location Europe platform. And if you if you know the OGC API uh, family of, of uh, access standards, this landing page also lists or shows the the uh, collections path of the API. So in principle, here we we see all the content available from the platform as 
as easy a list of, of collections from which we can also go directly to explore data or, or see the API. So here are the main uh, themes, buildings in 2D, in 3D, uh, roads in 2D and uh, 3D, digital terrain model, digital surface model, temperature, wind speed and sunshine. And these are selected uh, to support the use, uh, selected use case of, of renewable energy. Um, we can go first to see the individual APIs. We go by theme. We can go, for example, to Buildings 2D. And this structure here that we see uh, is um, directly reflecting the structure of the API itself so that we can go to see the collections inside this building 2D um, API. And as I said, individual countries are shown here so that we can go, for example, to, to see Finland. This is so-called um, um, collection description page. And then we go to see the individual data items. And here we have um, a map view in which we can zoom in. And when we zoom in deep enough, uh, we will uh, start seeing the actual uh, vector features, as you see here. We can select individual features and go to see the item level API, meaning that we get only one uh, one object requested from the service shown here on top of the uh, auto photo back background and we see all the attributes provided by the by the service. And here you see that we have also uh, temperature, wind speed and sunshine um, as attributes of, of that individual building. Um, <clears throat> Then uh, we can go, of course, to see another example, for example, 3D buildings in this API level. We see collections and we go to Estonia, for example. Uh, with the, um, items level, we zoom into Tallinn to see um, some certain area. For example, let's go here to the old city. And we, when we are uh, zoomed deep enough, we, we are able to open the 3D view. And then we get uh, 3D buildings displayed in, in the uh, 3D visualization component here. Um, we can also download the part of the data set uh, displayed in the map view and and copy the URL that can be used to to download the data set uh, directly. So in a similar way in the raster domain, we could go to see them. Um, uh, for example, digital terrain model data set and um, and when again zoomed in deep enough, we will be getting a digital terrain model from the national service in, in Netherlands. So for each theme, we have these uh, API uh, access uh, pages here that reflect the actual API structure. But then we have added a, a more easy way to access the content, uh, the explore view here. Uh, for example, uh, we select Buildings 2D, the map Im immediately shows from where we have that theme available. And we add, if we add another theme, the map uh, view is updated to show from where both of these uh, themes are available currently. So, for example, we could use uh, Buildings 2D and a Digital Terrain Model we select those two themes and we then zoom in to some location. For example, let's go to Finland, Lahti area here. So we will be requesting digital terrain model, which is shown here. And if we go deeper, it should be also getting uh, buildings displayed. 
and we can this year, uh, adjust uh, opacity values for the individual layers. So here we are able to see the surroundings of the buildings, the, the elevation around in the area, and and maybe um, make some um, some um, conclusions about the, for example, availability availability of the sunshine um, exposure in the area, and we also see the actual value of the digital terrain model uh, coverage here uh, on the pointer. If we then uh, shift this to digital surface model, uh, which is even more useful to evaluate the uh, availability of the sun shining uh, in the area, as we can see here, the actual values, the, the elevation values of different um, ob objects around the building. Um, and then, of course, we can always go to see the individual um, attributes of the building that we are interested in to see the, um, also the um, climate attributes. We have also forecast temperature available from Finland here. So, um, Uh, what shall I do next? Um, maybe I could show you an an, an example of the uh, simple analysis um, function that we have developed on top of these data sets. Um, let me see. If it's possible, uh, Lasse, to link it to the solar energy potential theme yes. that we had in mind, so yes, that I will. would be excellent. I will try, yeah. So this is an example of uh, a simple analysis based on the data sets that we have made available. For example, I select a building here and uh, then I will be getting two additional uh, views here. One is showing the building in 3D. I'm able to rotate it in various ways and and look for the details, uh, 3D details of the building. Uh, but most interestingly, we have this uh, in this upper view here. We have a uh, simple analysis run dynamically, uh, taking into account the digital uh, surface model around the area and and. Uh, some calculation made on the amount of, of sun exposure uh, coming to each part of the of the building here and we are also um, making use of the uh, digital digital surface model uh, when i point my my um, a pointer here in this upper view the 3d model will be shown from the from the location of the pointer uh, so that I can look at the building from different uh, heights. For example, when I go here, I will be looking on the building from the top of that building uh, as the elevation for the for the uh, viewpoint is taken from the digital uh, surface model. So um, this is an example of an simple analysis that is based on the on the data sets that are available from the from the platform so um maybe we could just go a bit um away and uh, select for example some of these climate attributes so here we have temperature displayed across all of the participating countries uh, or wind speed from the countries that we have it available and finally sunshine so these are properties that are always of course important when considering the the energy um, requirements for for a building on certain location so is that enough
or something? Would you like to see more, something more, Anina? Uh, well, if you have some, you know, maybe two minute examples, but here are also a couple of questions. Maybe we can take them here. And if if someone wants to ask or comment something on Lassie's presentation or ask more uh, examples, it's it's much appreciated. Uh, but the, the first question from Mr. Hunt uh, is about the, the news of France LiDAR HD program is already showing lot one building models and he asks, is this data set also accessible? From France. Did you say from France? Yes, yes. Yeah, no. The, actually, the current uh, 3D models of buildings that we uh, provide on the platform are based on on uh, 2D um, footprint of the building, and then uh, about uh, on the information about the um, um, number of floors of the building, or is it actual height? I do not remember. But I, I, in actually, it's it's generated dynamically based on the 2D footprint and and information about the height of the building. So we do not use any laser laser data here. Yes, and uh, Mr. Uh, Kostromin asks about this uh, World Geodetic System 84. Not sure, uh, maybe Lassi. Uh, you know the part, or if if Mr. Kostromin, you want to ask uh, and define your question, because the question is, are they in uh, in this coordinate system? So, are they what? <laughs> Not sure where it, uh, this question is linked. When download files are in which system they are, the download files are they in WGS eighty four? Mm, mostly they are, yes. Mm -hmm. When we are talking about uh, geojson encoded content like two D buildings, they are in 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 uh, in that coordinate system. But, uh, for example, um, digital terrain model and digital surface model data, they are in the national coordinate systems mostly when you download them. Right. Uh, no further question at the moment in the chat, but uh, is there any questions that someone wants to ask? Open the mic and and ask something. Not at this point, it seems. <coughs> there is Hendrik. Sorry. Yes. Yes. F yes. Hello. Excellent. Hello. Uh, I was asking for this uh, France data. Uh, thank you for the answer for uh, uh, 2D footprints and I understand um, floor or height height model. It was it was used to generate, but if I look at Location Europe, uh, uh, this data explorer it, it it showed also yes that it was uh, kind of generated in LOD one. So is this uh, some some kind of combination you have aggregated for your project? And I would really like to test this data specifically for France. So probably. I should apply for an API access. Is that correct? Yes, if you want to access the platform from outside of the user interface, then you then you need an API uh, key, which is freely available and can be requested from the platform. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will, yes, I will try it then specifically on the data of France and what, what will be there. Okay. Okay. Maybe you can say also a few words. What are the next uh, countries you plan to work on on this project? Of course, it always depends on the interest of the individual NMCAs to 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 join. 
so we don't necessarily know at the moment which which will be the the, the next countries to be to be added and i don't know whether anti has any any more concrete ideas or or aims in that respect I can I can come back to that when I speak about the future. Yeah, uh, that was a good question, Hendrik. So maybe okay. if there's uh, no no more questions, maybe we can go towards the future discussion. Uh, so Antti could highlight a bit of the future, but at this point, uh, thank you, Lassi, uh, for your presentation. And if you have any questions uh, about the platform, you can, of course, use the chat now or then ask Lassi later or then contact by using uh, the contact information which is in the platform. But uh, let's go to the future. Uh, what does it look like, Antti? Do you already know what are the next countries or areas or data that we are getting in? Any plans? Well, I probably know one country that we are at least discussing at this point. But but if I take a general general view on, on this is that we, we have established this European data provide uh, data provider, core data provider network. And that's basically open. You have to if you are a data provider in the country, and of course this this webinar is not directly targeted to the data providers, but but basically we are approaching all of these data providers in Europe and we would like them to join. So in, in our website, you, you can indicate that you're interested to join and then uh, you, you, you agree a letter of support with us and then basically we connect uh, those national sources to our platform. So that's a basic, basic idea with the European Core Data Provider Network. And we are currently negotiating with one, one country. Maybe it's not fair to say the name at this point because we haven't agreed uh, with them yet, but they are very interested uh, to join the um, data. And related to, to the existing, even existing countries like France and, and, and the, let's say outside of this, this project one like France and Germany, of course, we are very dependent on what kind of data they want to connect. So if, if basically the France would say that they would like to connect the level of detail one buildings that they have created, of course, we would do it. But currently we are using this, as Alassi said, that uh, for France, we are using this um, this level of, well, this 2D buildings and then we uh, calculate the level of detail uh, one uh, using the the uh, floor information in France, in some other countries we use the height height model as well to calculate that. So that's the basic situation at this point. Um, related to what would be the the what, what would be the ideas that we we are working with this platform, is that um, as I said earlier, uh, this is now under the Location Innovation Hub. So we would be running this as a test, uh, test type of infrastructure. Uh, it's open uh, for everybody interested. Uh, you have to uh, apply for the API key if you want to use the, uh, the actual API, but if you just want to have a view, it's openly available. Um, we would like that there would be more like, uh, let's say, use this kind of companies or businesses that would be interested to, to start using that. We would be uh, very interested to know wh where, what kind of business you want to uh, to use it, and and would like to discuss that. And that, for that reason, when you apply the API key, you would get it first for seven days, and then then we would do this um, digital maturity assessment, and and you would be coming a client of the Location Innovation Hub. And in that discussion, we can also discuss with you that, OK, what is the purpose you would like to see this 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 platform to go in the future? So that's kind of based also uh, from the user's perspective, what countries you want to see, what kind of data you want to see. So we would like to increase the data. So it, it currently, uh, currently it's the uh, the, um, the the collection is based on what we what use cases where we're thinking in GOE3, but we are 
moving towards different uh, different approaches based on on the user interest uh, from from you. So that's basically up to you. It, one one thing that we would like to also go is that we are looking uh, looking um, currently to uh, make a proposal for the Green Deal call. We also see that uh, uh, there's a lot of potential with other European data spaces that are currently in, in development. So we would like to see that this location, Europe.eu, is kind of input to those different data spaces that are in, uh, going to be developed in Europe. So that is one of the ambitions that we have. How we are going to get there, that's the, that's the question mark. Uh, we are currently making a proposal for the Green Deal data space call. If we are successful, that might be one way to do it. But we know that there are other opportunities in, in Europe, uh, uh, in, in Digital Europe program coming in coming years. So that might be also that we will utilize the other, uh, other possibilities. Then finally, maybe I say also that we, we are very interested to look also on the commercial, uh, let's say, business opportunities that if you are, if you want to build your business on this kind of data, and you would like to kind of start building a commercial app, a commercial solution based on this type of uh, this type of access to the national data. So we would be very interested to discuss that as well. So maybe that's enough for the let's say future um, possibilities. Yes, exciting, exciting news and exciting future uh, ahead. There is one question uh, about the API key. Will it expire by default? You said after seven days and after last seven it, days, it, yes. it will expire. Yes, exactly. Last but, it just but you answered. Will get it if you if you do a DMA, DMA this digital maturity assessment with us, you will get a uh, continuation of that. That case. yes.